সুপ্রিয় দর্শক সবাইকে আমন্ত্রণ জানাচ্ছি ফার্মিং ফিউচার বাংলাদেশ নিবেদিত দীপ্ত কৃষি সংলাপে পাওয়ার্ড বাই কাজী ফার্মস কো স্পন্সার্ড বাই এয়ার মালিক সিট দীপ্ত কৃষি সংলাপের মাধ্যমে আমরা প্রতি সপ্তাহে কৃষির নানাবিধ সমস্যা ও সমাধানের উপায় নিয়ে আলোচনা করছি আমরা এই সপ্তাহে আলোচনা করব গ্লোবাল ফুড সিকিউরিটি এন্ড রোল অফ এগ্রিকালচার ইনোভেশন ইন বাংলাদেশ এ বিষয়ে আলোচনার জন্য আজকে আমাদের সাথে যুক্ত হয়েছেন মিস্টার রবার্ট সিমসন কান্ট্রি রিপ্রেজেন্টেটিভ এফএও ইন বাংলাদেশ অ্যান্ড মিস্টার মার্ক ডেভিস সিনিয়র টেকনিক্যাল অ্যাডভাইজার এফএও দর্শক আমরা জানি খাদ্য উৎপাদন করতে গেলে সার কীটনাশক এবং অন্যান্য বিভিন্ন উপাদান ব্যবহার করতে হয় বাংলাদেশের কৃষকরা অনেক সময় সেগুলো মাত্রাতিরিক্ত উপায়ে ব্যবহার করেন তাছাড়া এই কীটনাশক আমদানি করার ফলেও অনেক সময় অব্যবহৃত কীটনাশক পরিবেশের জন্য হুমকির কারণ হতে পারে আজকে তেমনই একটি বিষয় আমরা আলোচনা করব যেখানে বাংলাদেশ বেশ কয়েক বছর আগে ষাটের দশকে ডিডিটি নামক একটি ক্ষতিকর উপাদান বাংলাদেশ আমদানি করেছিল যেটা অব্যবহৃত রয়ে যায় খুব দুঃখজনক হলেও সত্যি যে সেটা অব্যবহৃত থাকার কারণে পরিবেশের উপর একটা হুমকির কারণ হয়ে যায় দাঁড়িয়েছিল বাংলাদেশ সরকার এবং জাতিসংঘের ফুড অ্যান্ড এগ্রিকালচার অর্গানাইজেশন তারা যৌথভাবে সেই ডিডিটি অপসারণের জন্য দীর্ঘ প্রায় পনেরো বছর ধরে কাজ করে যাচ্ছিল আমরা খুব আনন্দের সাথে জানাচ্ছি সম্প্রতি সেই ক্ষতিকর ডিডিটি বাংলাদেশ থেকে আমরা অবমুক্ত করতে সক্ষম হয়েছি আজকে আমরা আলোচনা করব সেই প্রক্রিয়া সম্পর্কে এবং সেই সাথে খাদ্য পুষ্টি নিরাপত্তার জন্য আসলে এফএও বাংলাদেশে কী কী কাজ করছে আগামী দিনগুলোতে বাংলাদেশ সরকার কী কী পদক্ষেপ নিতে পারে সেই সম্পর্কে আমরা আলোচনা করব আসুন আমরা ফিরে যাই মূল আলোচনায় মিস্টার রবার্ট উই ওয়েলকাম ইউ টু আওয়ার উইকলি ডিসকাশন প্রোগ্রাম ফার্মিং ফিউচার দীপ্ত টেলিভিশন টক শো you know that the population is increasing globally and very recently the milestone of 8 billion people has become a like momentum and talk for many of the expert so uh, do you think that uh, the potential and probability of you know like food security and the growth of population will have some impact uh, in in the smallholder community particularly in the developing countries like bangladesh no uh, thank you. And thank you, Arif. It's good to be back on uh, Farming Future Bangladesh. Uh, so uh, I appreciate your welcome. Uh, it's an amazing milestone that we've passed 8 billion people on our planet. And to be that 8th billion person uh, is quite an honor, but also a challenge. And so I would agree with you. There's, you know, the, the planet does face challenges. What I would say is that in all of history, humankind, we've always been able to produce enough food for the people on the planet. And I would say that it continues today and that will more than likely continue in the future. We've had opportunities like technical advancement, uh, digital revolution, uh, more scientific uh, research and inputs that have always allowed us to produce more and more food. The bigger challenges that we foresee today and looking into the future is some of the challenges that we have in climate unpredictability. And this is to say that we're having increased droughts, right. we have increased storm intensity, we have a bit of increased or sporadic flooding, unpredictable uh, cyclones, uh, these sorts of things. And that puts a challenge on a very specific geographic area. And so th the challenges of feeding 8 billion people is much more on predictability of natural resources and availability, as well as the distribution of food. So again, I go back to that, there's always enough food but there's pockets of those that are impacted by these climate actions. There's uh, forced displacement of populations that you often have in a, in a, uh, a war context. Uh, and so these are the areas where we have to really focus and come together as a population to ensure the food security on a global scale. I'll get back to you, but before that, Mark, uh, uh, in the introduction, we have mentioned with our audience, uh, with our viewers that DDT, a very harmful pesticide has been like stacked in Bangladesh and very recently FAO and Bangladesh government has gained the milestone of, of getting rid of that uh, harmful uh, content, con uh, con confinement we had here. So can you like tell us a little bit of that and uh, what success we are like foreseeing based on the uh, knowledge and learning we have from this incident? Of course, um, FAO together with the government of Bangladesh formulated a project which is called pesticide risk reduction in Bangladesh. So we've been working across a broad spectrum of issues. And one of the key issues that we dealt with was this large stockpile of DDT that had been stored in a medical sub-depot in Chattogram 
since 1985. So it's almost 40 years this chemical has been there. And over time, it has degraded so that uh, the containers have fallen apart. The powder was released. It was a dry formulation. Some of it was released into the environment when, the, when floods hit that location. So this was a very dangerous chemical stored in a very large quantity, 500 tons, in a single location in the middle of the city of Chattagram. So we were very concerned that, uh, that this was a high-risk situation and we wanted to work with the government to try and find an appropriate solution. Now, I've uh, designed and implemented projects like this in many countries around the world. So we, we designed a project um, which basically aimed to repackage this waste and to have it safely destroyed. Um, it was a very messy and, and difficult operation. Uh, because and it of, took a long time. It took several months. Uh, it, I mean, I first came here in 2007. So it's taken 15 years to, to finalize the operation. Uh, but the operation itself started uh, in March of this year and is being completed pretty much as we speak now. The last shipments are leaving uh, Bangladesh. Have gone to port. Uh, we'll get back to you, but before that, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Robert uh, climate change has become a like, critical issue in Bangladesh and in other, 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 other developing countries, particularly like the most affected vulnerable countries. And now we are talking about agricultural transformation, the whole system needs to be transformed. Uh, we talk about resilience, we talk about uh, relief to resilience, where you need to sustain within the system. So where we actually are, are now relying on the resources and what capacity we have uh, for coming days to tackle all the challenges? Yeah, yeah thank you. That's an excellent question. You know, climate change isn't just an issue of, of agriculture. Climate change is probably the, the challenge of our generation. And we're on a, a critical moment, as our Secretary General of the United Nations has said in his last two years of his annual addresses, climate change and climate issues are the most pressing issue to humankind uh, that we're facing at this moment. Uh, this said, we also had uh, helped organize, uh, FAO helped organize the Food Systems Summit in October of 2021 and uh, November of 2021 when it was organized in New York. Within this context, it was made remarkably clear that one, uh, agriculture and our food systems account for upwards of 30% of all global greenhouse gases that are produced. This is a massive impact on, on climate change. Uh, as well, it was recognized that our food systems are no longer necessarily fit for purpose. And this ties in to your earlier question about 8 billion people on the planet and, and assuring food security and nutrition security for all 8 billion people. See, it's a bit of like paradoxical. I mean, on one hand, we need more produce. And on the other hand, there would be like some sort of uh, consequence where we'll have like effect on the environment. Well, so you can look at it as a paradox or, or a, a contradictory challenge, but it doesn't have to be. It can be a, a recognition of the interrelatedness of all the things that, that we do to survive on the planet. And producing our food doesn't have to be a high global impact. So we look at, as you pointed out, the different uh, areas of climate resilience, which is adapting to climate change. And so this is new rice varieties that can be grown in, in saline environments or, or using vertical gardening to, to use uh, a smaller geographic space to produce more food, uh, more efficient ways of irrigating through buried pipes and solar systems instead of using diesel for pumping uh, water. These are all ways of adapting to that scenario, but we, all, we can also mitigate. And there's different uh, mitigation uh, areas of using wet, dry systems of rice production that reduces methane gas, uh, producing milk more efficiently, so you have less methane from, from the cattle industry. So there's a lot of different ways that we can transform our agriculture sector to ensure that we produce more safer and higher quality food without necessarily having negative impacts on our immediate environment, but also the climate. And, and, and might, we might need to look into like the uh, uh, economical benefit of like the smallholder. Because if we talk about Bangladesh, then smallholder farmers are like the only uh, producer in our country, mostly. So Mark, uh, uh, Robert was mentioning about safer ways of like producing food. And when we talk about climate change, sometimes we see that newer pests are coming forward, you know, like new diseases and other things. And uh, people don't mind, many of the farmers, uh, technically, uh, they don't follow the proper instruction of using pesticide and harmful pesticide, which might have like negative impact on human health and environment. So do you think that things might need to change in coming days and farmers need to follow 
you know, like better practice. We talk about good agriculture practice. We talk about IPM. Newer tools are coming forward, like pest resistance crop, um, genetically modified crop, gene editing, all these things are together. But do you think that can Bangladesh learn from all these, you know, like uh, 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 issues that we are having? And uh, do you have actually enough skill and capacity to, to move ahead? Capacity is definitely there. Uh, and these issues, as Robert has already said, are not unique to Bangladesh. They apply to, to farmers around the world. Um, it's important to recognize, first of all, that pest management in, in agriculture is integral to crop production. So if you have a, sustain, a resilient crop that's being grown, it will be more resilient to pests and diseases in the same way as it is resilient to uh, the, uh, the impacts of climate change, for example. So you need to look after the soil, you need to look after the environment to make sure that that resilience is there. Now, a healthy crop in a healthy environment uh, will require fewer pesticides. And I think what the direction that Bangladeshi as well as other farmers need to be taking is to have a better understanding of the ecosystem in which they are operating. Growing crops is part of the natural process. It's, it's, it depends on natural uh, systems such as soil nutrition, um, such as irrigation, water, rainfall, whether it comes naturally or whether it comes from an irrigation system. So plants need to be well nourished, well irrigated. The soil needs to be in good condition. And all of these things depend on farmer knowledge. So we have to, first of all, acknowledge that the farmers are experts in their own right, but also give them the tools and the information that they need to be able to help their crops be more resilient to climate change as well as to pests and diseases. Pest management itself, there's an almost automatic reaction. If there's a pest in the field, let's use a chemical. It doesn't have to be a chemical. There are many, many other ways of dealing with pests. We can deal with pests through cultural controls. For example, you can select resistant varieties of crops. You can plant them in ways that help them to resist diseases or certain... Or crop rotating and other things might be... Beneficial. Absolutely. Rotations and so forth. All of these things help to prevent pests and, and diseases in crops. And farmers know these things and need to be advised and reminded that these are good practices. Um, then there are mechanical controls. You can use pheromone traps, for example, where you're not spreading pesticides in the field, but you're bringing the pests to the pesticide. Mark, you were talking about, you know, like the knowledge and capacity that we had uh, from this uh, 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 recent issue and incident, the DDT. Uh, can you talk a little bit about it uh, for our viewers and audience? Of course. Um, we, the, the project has been designed in collaboration with government uh, and could not be implemented without full collaboration of many departments and units uh, from the government. So we really appreciate the, the high level of collaboration that we've had from, from throughout this project uh, because it simply could not have been done without that. Um, and the project has also been designed to leave knowledge in the country, so to build capacity in areas where the government needs to, you know, feels the need to perhaps move forward in certain areas. So we have been working with the Department of Agriculture Extension, uh, looking at the way pesticides are regulated and the way they're being used at the moment, uh, and seeing if there are things that we can do to help uh, to advance knowledge and advance capacity uh, in various departments. So uh, what learning and, you know, like the capacity building uh, we, we have for the, for the issue, recent issue we had on the DDT, and how actually government is, you know, like taking this forward. So what I would like to say, I'd, I'd like to emphasize that without full collaboration of many departments in, and the in government and the, the ministries and departments and, uh, and other units within the city of Chattagram and the district of Chattagram, we could not have implemented this project. So I'd like to really express our appreciation for that collaboration. Um, and beyond that, the project is designed with government also to ensure that the capacity is being developed in areas such as uh, sustainable pest management, uh, using biological pesticides, using cultural controls and alternatives to pesticides as much as possible, reducing the risk from pesticides. We're also working with the Department of the Environment to put in place systems for the management of empty pesticide containers so that we remove that source of contamination from the environment. And in addition to that, other agricultural plastics, which is a big contamination problem plastics in the environment. We're working with the Department of Health uh, to, um, to build a poison uh, monitoring center and help to control poisonings from pesticides. Uh, and we're working with the Department of Fisheries to ensure that fish drying, where sometimes pesticides are used to keep insects off, are also uh, taken out of the equation. Good. 
Uh, Robert, uh, Bangladesh has recently celebrated 50 years of independence. And FAO in Bangladesh has almost like a similar timeline for their intervention. Uh, now we, we are uh, living in a, in, a, in a time where we have like COVID, climate change, and uh, national and international, you know, like crisis, inflation and everything. So do you think that uh, these newer technologies and the approaches and the strategies and suggestions from like the expertise that FAO has and the intervention that you have will actually benefit countries like Bangladesh uh, in the coming days, uh, particularly if we talk about like uh, modernization of agriculture, transformation of the agriculture system, uh, engagement of youth and women in agriculture, empowering them, particularly health of the farmers and consumers. So what is your like comment and statement? Yeah, uh, thank you, Arif. That's a, that's a large question, but um, I, I, I would like to appreciate uh, the, the efforts of government and the relationship that FAO has had uh, uh, since independence. And we've really worked closely together on very pointed production, uh, systems and increasing production in the early days and now moving on to uh, more nuanced of transformation of agriculture to fit the needs of a, a population that's moving from uh, where it is today and, and as you pointed out to some degree subsistence agriculture to, uh, to uh, a commercialized mechanized and, and uh, diversified agriculture systems to look at nutrition security and the, the more commercial uh, means of, of doing business at this point. Looking and at safe our way of like producing the food. Thank you, Mr. Robert, and thank you, uh, Mr. Mark, for uh, uh, sharing all the knowledge and information with our with our viewer. Yep. Darshak, amra jani khadder utpadon ebang utpadin shilota bazaar akhar jonno shar kitna shak ebang onnano chemical bebahar kora hoy mathe kishok shiklo bebahar koren. Amra aske shunlam je khadder utpadin shilota bazaar akhar hobe. Prithibe jonno shonka hoye chhe pray 8 billion. কিন্তু সেই উৎপাদন এবং উৎপাদনশীলতা বজায় রাখার পাশাপাশি পরিবেশের প্রতি এবং পরিবেশের উপর যাতে বিরূপ কোনো প্রভাব না আসে সেই বিষয়ে আমাদের লক্ষ্য রাখতে হবে লক্ষ্য রাখতে হবে যাতে কৃষক এবং ভোক্তার স্বাস্থ্যের কোনো ঝুঁকি আমরা খাদ্য উৎপাদন প্রক্রিয়ার মধ্যে না নিয়ে আসি আমরা আশা করব নতুন প্রযুক্তি এবং প্রযুক্তিগত উন্নয়নের ফলে বাংলাদেশের কৃষিতে যেই উৎপাদনশীলতা বজায় রয়েছে সেটি চলমান থাকবে प्रत्येक घरे निरापद और पुष्टिकर खाद्य पहुँचे जाए से आशाद व्यक्त कर विदाय निचि फार्मिंग फ्यूचर बांग्लेश निवेदित दीप्त कृषि संलापर यह सप्ताह आयोजन थे हमारे परवर्ती अनुष्ठान देखार आमंत्रण रही शुक्रवार बिकल चार्टे तिर मिनिटे सबाई भलो थकबें निरापदे थकबें धन्यवाद